Hey, do you guys want to see my Amoeba collection? I've got it right here. They're all on this little uh, worthless piece of plastic. They're uh, microscopic, so you can't really see them that well, but uh, they're there. Yep. Amoebas. This also doubles as my Amiibo collection, too, by the way. It's just the one. With uh, Pac-Man here. And uh, Pop Fizz. Despite my toy-like features and the fact that I've made this video, I'm not actually big into Amiibo. I dabbled with Skylanders when they first came out, I liked the idea of LEGO Dimensions on paper, and as a kid I loved the ever-loving stuffing out of the real Toys to Life OGs, Webkins. But regardless of all that, I never really got into Amiibo. I bought the Pac-Man one for myself one day on a whim and received a Link one on my birthday or something, but no Nintendo game has ever compelled me to use them as intended. I trained my Amiibo Pac-Man in Smash 4 and exploited him for a costume in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and that's about it. And to be fair, no Nintendo game has really honestly, earnestly tried to implement Amiibo figures in a way that's appealing in the Toys to Life fashion. Mommy, mommy, I want a Ruby bonus in Iron Warriors, mommy! People have proposed many different pitches for an all-encompassing Amiibo adventure game before, but while I do think that would be interesting, that's not what I'll be talking about today. Today, I'm going to throw out some other kinds of ideas for totally new Amiibo lines that I could see myself getting into, either today or as a kid, and how they could function alongside accompanying games or software. Before I start, however, let me make my stance on Amiibo as on-disc DLC clear. I am 100% against Amiibos doing things like unlocking hard modes or quality of life features like fast travel. Like seriously, how does that even make sense as a function for a physical toy? The Wolf Link Amiibo in Breath of the Wild makes sense functionally because it's a little like taking your real life wolf friend who's a toy and sending him to the video game world to do whatever a wolf friend does. I wouldn't know, I bought neither the toy nor the game. Get me down from here! The way I see it, Amiibos should function not unlike Guitar Hero guitars or Dance Dance Revolution pads. Companion items that the game therefore could technically work without, but are made better by merit of being tied to them. Now that I've got that out of the way, here are 10 ideas for Amiibo lines that I think would be pretty cool. <sighs> Writing is so hard. Number one, Pokemon Amiibo cards. How is this not a thing? Like seriously, I could have sworn that back in the day people discovered that Pikachu and Charizard Smash Amiibos had like special serial numbers that lined up with their dex entries or something. But even if not, the fact that Amiibo cards are a thing that exist at all makes it all the more suspicious as to why Nintendo and the Pokemon company never put one and one together to make like a Pokemon TCG or Stadium game that used Amiibo. Lord knows the Wii U could have used one, but Lord also knows the Wii U could have used a lot of things. The idea still has appeal, I say. They could make cards like they already do now and roll out the occasional figure variant for select Pokemon and make a bajillion dollars. I personally wouldn't be into it, but I know for a fact that it would be a big, big, big seller. Maybe too big. Number two, Arms Amiibo. Now we're talking. As many of my followers know, I am a huge ARMS fan. If they came out with ARMS Amiibo, I'd probably buy one, or two, or most, or all! Okay, no, not all, I'm not made of money, but still! ARMS already leans heavily into the customization side of things. So they could function in a new game almost the exact same way Smash 4 Amiibos did. Storing fighter data, strategies, and custom moves. Or in this case, ARMS loadouts. And possibly more custom stuff if they go hog wild with more customization options, as I proposed in my Hopes for Arms 2 video. And on the physical side of things, you can make the figure's arms poseable like the Breath of the Wild Guardian amiibo. That'd be sick! Number 3. Fossil Fighters amiibo. Do you remember Fossil Fighters? It was a short-lived Nintendo series on the DS that sadly never took off and alienated its already small fan base by the time they reached their third game. So I don't blame you if you don't. Either way, there's a mechanic in those games whereby you dig for fossils, buff them, clean them, and put them together to summon dinosaur- uh, Oh, excuse me, I mean vivasaurs, whatever floats your boat game, for you to collect and battle with. Now stepping aside from fossil fighters for a minute, I remember when I was a very, very small child, I got a toy set that came with a volcano-shaped bowl for holding water, and a couple eggs made of a dissolvable soap-like material that had dinosaur body parts inside, which you were then supposed to attach in the right places to build little dinosaur toys. It was the best! Not only because it was fun to do the pretend archaeology thing, but also because you could swap the dino's body parts around and make horrible Franken-dinos. Dino-steins. 
Frankensaurus. I'm pretty sure that's not how they were intended to be used, but I don't care. That's where half the fun came from for me. A Franken Dino mechanic is something I don't think the Fossil Fighter series has tried before. So introducing that in tandem with a new way to use amiibos would be a stellar way to inject new life into this dormant franchise. And if you're a crummy, boring adult who doesn't want to play paleontologist just to build yourself an RPG party, then I'm sure the game could come with some non-toy vivisaurs too. Or maybe the NFC chips themselves wouldn't be inside the soap eggs, I don't know. Number 4. Teddy Bear Styled Stuffed Animal Amiibos Whether or not this idea gets tied to a pre-existing Nintendo IP or something totally new is irrelevant. Because the very concept of a children's game where you can put your stuffed animals into a game world should give any businessman a case of the cash eyes. Webkins knew this all the way back in like, what, 2006? And with those, you needed a one-time code to register the animal, and the toy never interacted with the game again. Imagine a Nintendogs game where you have a precious little plushy puppy pal who can tap their whittle paw on the controller and go inside the game to participate in silly Nintendog shenanigans who you can also physically bring to a friend's house to play with their virtual slash physical puppy pal too! And it retains all its training, toys, traits, or whatever thanks to the NFC chip. I know for a fact, every little girl I knew growing up, and plenty of little boys too, would be bananas for such an idea. And there's no shortage of Nintendo properties that could absolutely take advantage of the concept. Nintendogs, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, Pikmin, Yoshi, Kirby, even Sushi Striker, why not? And even still, Nintendo could easily hone in their creative talent to create an entirely new line of characters catered specifically to this idea. And then down the line, we could get the mascot one in Smash Bros. 7 and we'll all lose our collective minds. Number 5. Save Data Amiibo this line wouldn't be made with a specific game in mind, and would more so be for collectors rather than children. But what else is new? In essence, Amiibo in this series could be modeled after any Nintendo character item or otherwise they can dream of, and their primary function would be to hold and transfer stored data to and from current Nintendo systems. Now bear in mind, I could be completely mistaken, but so far as I know, when an Amiibo interacts with something like Smash Ultimate for instance, the game is taking information from that Amiibo and putting it into the game, which can then in turn be modified through playing with it and such. And when you're done playing with it in the game, you put the information back into the Amiibo. It is my understanding then that when you're playing with the Amiibo in-game, the figure is just standing there devoid of data. Now if I'm wrong and this isn't exactly the case, I'm sure Nintendo could still figure out a way to engineer an Amiibo that specifically does work like that, so whatever. This has all just been a roundabout way for me to say that it isn't a completely out of the question idea for old don't let the pirates get it Nintendo to consider making a line of collectible figures capable of storing treasured downloadable titles or at the very least save data from them. As we move closer and closer to a mostly if not all digital future for games, I want there to be more convenient and non-dubious methods of preserving our digital goods. And if such methods could also be shaped like Rob the Robot, that'd be nice. Number 6. Mr. Potato Head Esk Amiibo This is something of an original idea, so bear with me. Imagine a 6 to 12 inch toy character covered in little outlets intended to be filled by arms, legs, eyes, mouths, etc, etc, that could be registered in a game and stored to the game's data for convenient use later. That way you could save loadouts to the game and still have fun coming up with all sorts of new combinations of accessories for the physical toy. Ubisoft tried an idea similar to this with Starlink, but I feel like the blandness of the toy's designs and arbitrariness of the parts in relation to the game in general hindered the idea substantially. The idea I'm proposing is more toy than game, more personal than Starlink's rocket ships, and more appealing slash marketable than something like Labo. The accompanying software could even be a free download a la Mario Kart Live Home Tour. Certainly there could be some nifty things to do within the software, like maybe multiplayer battles, explorable areas, a toy box mode, mini games, maybe even a little campaign, who knows? But it would all be secondary to the core appeal of having a neat toy with which you can deform to your heart's content. I feel like that's the sort of off-the-wall blue ocean idea that Nintendo would be all about. And if the character or characters they come up with for the toys were appealing, I might even get into it as an adult. Number 7. Custom Robo Amiibo. Now it's not what you think. If you're familiar at all with Custom Robo, or have the ability to extrapolate information from incomplete data through the method of elementary, Custom Robo games task the player with customizing a robot and taking them into battle. You may think my pitch for an Amiibo line would involve swappable parts like Starlink, but I don't think that's a good idea. Clearly kids these days don't care for buying parts of a greater whole separately unless they're intangible Fortnite skins. So my pitch for a custom Robo Amiibo wouldn't necessarily be physical representations of the Robo characters, but rather the cube form they canonically take while outside Holoseums, a half-digital, half-interdimensional space where battles take place in the custom Robo universe. Because the cubes are just, well, cubes, 
they presumably wouldn't be very hard to manufacture. And judging by the fact that they once shoved the things into boxes of cereal, presumably neither are the NFC chips. So players who are into having multiple loadouts they can take with them to friends' houses could buy them for cheap and or in bulk, and maybe they could also have some character-specific figures and or cards, like Rey or this hypothetical New Games cast of Commander characters, that would be capable of holding multiple loadouts at once. It's an idea. It's not a terrible idea, but, uh, an idea, all the same. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to put Custom Robo on the list. You caught me! Go ahead, lock me up. I request a lawyer. Number eight. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you guys. I'm running out of substantial ideas for new amiibo lines here. Like, I thought about maybe a new DK line of amiibo figures who provide balloons or barrels or whatever, but that's just more of the same lame guff we've been getting from amiibos that already exist. There really aren't all that many new and interesting avenues to explore with amiibo, are there? Heck, a couple of my ideas were more or less based on the Smash Lines function, like the Arms and Custom Robo ideas. I stand by the ideas I've already listed, but I can't be bothered to come up with 10, I'm sorry. Eh, clickbait, clickbait, the title says top 10, so sue me. I should really stop inciting these things. Amiibos as they are now aren't perfect, but they're perfectly okay. Sometimes they give nice in-game bonuses. Sometimes they're inoffensively useless. Sometimes they have features that really should be built into the game they're made for and not locked behind a physical good that costs more than a third of the game it's for. But all in all, I think we can all agree that they've got the potential to be so much more. Maybe not too much more, but still so much more. And thus ends my video. What do you think? How do you feel about Amiibos in general? Do you like them? Dislike them? Do you care about what they do in games or do you just like the way they look? Have you got some neat new Amiibo ideas of your own? Whatever thoughts, opinions, or ideas you've got, I want to see them in the comments, please. Let's you and me make like Amiibos to a Nintendo game and interact, baby. But not in a weird way, I just meant like a, a way that benefits me with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching, means the world to me, especially that you made it all the way to the end here. It honestly rocks. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more videos like this. Sharing this video or my channel in general on social media also helps a ton, but if you really want to help more than YouTube ever will, consider supporting me on Patreon, where for as little as $1 a month, you get behind-the-scenes updates and a credit at the end of my videos here. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you the next time I see you.